Hey everyone, today we're going to be using the functions feature in ChatGPT. This is a really exciting new feature that OpenAI have added into their API that lets you integrate ChatGPT into your own code in a much more reliable and more powerful way than was possible by just sending text back and forth. So first up, what are ChatGPT functions? Well, up until now, the ChatGPT API was purely a text-based conversation. So you send some text to ChatGPT and you get some text back. The text you send to ChatGPT is what's often called the prompt, and the response you get back could be anything. Prompt engineering is the practice of fine-tuning that text that you send over in order to better control the text that you get back. So this made ChatGPT great for chatbots and having conversations with it, like you do in that ChatGPT console that I'm sure you've all seen by now. What this isn't very good for, though, is actually integrating the response messages into your own code. So for example, if I ask ChatGPT to give me some JSON that describes a list of restaurants, I can do that. And the response you get back contains some JSON, sure, but it often has this description at the start of it, um, or it might even have some more text at the end after the JSON. It was, it's responding a bit like a person would respond if you sent them an email asking them for some JSON, basically. It's having a conversation with you. But what if you just wanted to actually take that JSON and use it in your code? Well, to do that, you'd have to either write something hacky to extract the JSON from this response message, or you'd have to do some clever prompt engineering to try and get ChatGPT to return only that JSON by itself. Well, this is exactly the problem that ChatGPT functions can solve for you. At its most basic, function calling in ChatGPT is a feature that allows us to describe specific functions with an API call and tell ChatGPT how it can call that function if it wants to. So you might say, hey, ChatGPT, I want you to send an email and here is the function that you can call to send emails. Now the important catch here is that these functions don't actually have to exist. So you don't really need a function in your code that sends an email. You just have to tell ChatGPT that there is a function and how it can call it. What you get back is a special kind of response from the model that indicates how it will call your function and with what parameters. So let me show you with some code. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we've got a TypeScript file that we can debug in Visual Studio Code. Now, being able to debug this live using the debugger is going to be really useful for inspecting the objects that come back from the ChatGPT open API, and it's just going to prevent us having to do loads of console logs and things like that. So if I just do a console.log hello in here, and then put a breakpoint on it, so I'll put a breakpoint on line one, and then hit F5, and that's our file debugging. So that's a good place to start from. Now, let's go ahead and install the OpenAI package. So if we do import configuration and OpenAI API from this OpenAI package, now we'll need to do an npm install OpenAI, and that's the OpenAI client library for that API, and it's got TypeScript typings in it, so it's gonna be a really nice way of using this in TypeScript. So next up, let's create a main function. That'll be asynchronous, so that means that we can call the fetch API from uh, the OpenAI package asynchronously. And then we we'll go ahead and we'll create a new OpenAPI object using the OpenAPI API with a configuration object in there. And I'm gonna get my API key from a .m file, but obviously use your own API key here. So this is what this process.m OpenAPI key is doing. Okay, next up, let's actually create a ChatGPT call. So we'll create a response and we'll do await OpenAPI.createChatGPT completion. And then in here, we're gonna create the ChatGPT completion object, the one that gets sent off to OpenAPI. So we'll give it a model. Now, ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo 0613 is one of the models that supports GPT function calling, so we use that. And then we put our messages object in here. The role is gonna be user, that's part of the ChatGPT API. And then the content is gonna be the prompt. So we're gonna say, find me a Lebanese restaurant in London. Now what we're gonna do is ChatGPT won't be able to just go off and find me restaurants. So we're gonna give it a function that it can use to find restaurants. So in here, we'll create a functions object inside this request and we'll create an object and call the, call the function restaurant lookup. So this isn't a real function. This is just a function that we're telling ChatGPT it can call if it wants to. Um, and then when we do that, we can tell it what the function does. So it finds a restaurant serving the specific cuisine in the chosen city. And then we're gonna give it some parameters. So these are the parameters that get called when it calls the function. 
So we've got a object parameter, which is going to be a city, and that's going to be a string, and then a description of the city. And just create another one as well for the cuisine. Cool, so what we've done here is we've said to ChatGPT, we've got a function here called restaurant lookup that you can call if you want to, and this is what the description of the function is. And when you call that function, you need to pass in these two properties. You need to pass in a city, which is the name of the city, and the cuisine, which is the type of cuisine. So what we're really doing here is we're creating like API documentation for this function and sending that off to ChatGPT using natural language. And these descriptions are important because these descriptions are what OpenAI will use to work out whether it should call this function and to work out what values to put in there. So the descriptions being in plain text are incredibly important. So after we've called that, we'll just put in a debugger statement for our debugger. And then we're gonna call the function just using a top level await and then main. So we can go ahead and do this now. If we just push F5, that will build. And it should, if I put a breakpoint in there somewhere, put a breakpoint on line eight. So that should call the function. And then here you go, you can see, I'll just hide this debug window. You can see it's dropped in here and it's about to call our create chat GPT completion uh, function. So if we just uh, F5 past that, that's now calling chat GPT. And then we've done the debugger. We should be able to go up and inspect this response object in the debugger. So here we go. So you can see we've got a status 200 back from OpenAI. It's an okay response. And in here, you've got the object that comes back. Now, crucially, the data inside here, this is going to have one choice and it's going to be the function call. So usually you get a finished reason of like message or something in here saying that I've got a message back. But because we're using ChatGPT functions, the finished reason is that ChatGPT wants to now call our function. So you can see the message in here. It's got a function call property and it's actually created this argument object based on what we said it could do. So because our original prompt was find me a Lebanese restaurant in London, ChatGPT has gone, oh, I don't know how to do that, but I know there's a function I can use to call that. So I'm gonna call that function with these two arguments, city and cuisine. And that's the name of the function that we passed in. So this name restaurant lookup here will tie up with our function name restaurant lookup. So that's really good. So that's told uh, ChatGPT has turned our prompt into some structured data that it's gonna to use to call our function. So let's actually do something with this response then. Uh, if we go in here and do a little bit of defensive programming. So we wanna make sure that our chat GPT response data choices is the finished reason of function call. And if it isn't, something's gone wrong. Chat GPT hasn't called our function. So we're just gonna throw an error that says, chat GPT did not return a function call. So if that happens, you might wanna go back and change the description or change the parameter names inside your function. Next, we're gonna take that argument string. If you notice, it was a JSON encoded string. So we're going to take that and just make sure that's there. I'm using a lot of uh, question mark dots here. So if that's not there, we'll throw another error and say it didn't have any function arguments. So no function arguments returned from ChatGPT. So this is just a little bit of defensive programming here that's gonna make sure that ChatGPT returns a function call and make sure that function call has an argument string in it. Now that string is uh, JSON encoded. So what we can just do is use json.pass to turn that argument string into an argument object. Now this argument object is gonna have the properties that we wanted for our function call. So up here, it's gonna have a property of city and it's gonna have a property of cuisine. So we can actually use this argument object now and call a function called restaurant equals restaurant lookup. Arguments dot city and then argument object dot cuisine. So this restaurant lookup function doesn't actually exist. And I did say it doesn't have to exist, but if we want to integrate this into our code, then we probably want to go ahead and actually create a restaurant lookup function. So we'll give it a city and a cuisine, which are going to be strings. And it will just return a string that says, my lovely whatever restaurant in City Road, wherever it is. There we go. So now we should be able to run this again and it's gonna take the argument string from the response from ChatGPT 
it's going to pull those arguments out and actually call our restaurant lookup function. So let's give this a whirl. Push F5. Cool, I'm just going to hide this debug menu again. So here, so we're about to call off our chat GPT completion object. We'll run that with F10. That's now calling open API. As you can see, we've got the chat GPT response. That's got data, choices, and a finish reason. And our finish reason is function call, so that's not errored. The argument string is going to be there, and this is the JSON encoded argument string that ChatGPT has created. So that is there, so we're not executing our error. And we should be able to pass this. Parse or pass, there we go. Our argument object now is an object that contains the city and the cuisine that ChatGPT has decided it wanted to call. So if we do the restaurant lookup function, we can see that our restaurant string now says, my lovely Lebanese restaurant, City Road, London. And these words, Lebanese and London, have come out from the original prompt that we sent over to ChatGPT. So if you remember, our original prompt was, find me a re Lebanese restaurant in London. And ChatGPT has decided to turn this prompt into a function call with the parameters Lebanese and London. So that's really cool. And then we can carry on here and we can do some more and we can maybe go back and create another prompt and we can create some really, really complicated flows that go back and forth to OpenAI to call, call more functions and to really build up this functionality using TypeScript and the OpenAI package. So that was function calling in ChatGPT. This is a really powerful feature that opens up a world of possibilities for software developers like me and you. And it can really transform the way we interact with AI. We're no longer simply asking our AI models to generate a string of text. Instead, we're actually engaging with them in a two-way dialogue that can dynamically influence our programs. Think about how this can change your applications. Imagine having a detailed, organized piece of data back from a large language model, and you can use that data to execute specific functions in your own code. So it's like giving your AI applications a brand new set of tools by using this function feature. So I hope that walkthrough of function calling has shed some light onto what you can achieve with this fantastic new feature. And I definitely encourage you to play around with this in your own ChatGPT integrated programs. The world of AI is evolving every day and there's so much out there that you can experiment with and learn something new along the way. So that's all from today. Do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm James Charlesworth and I'll see you in the next video which is on your screen now.